I'm gonna show you a way how you can take app write queries that you would typically write like this and start writing them like this. The method I'm about to show you is gonna allow you to write less code while keeping things clean and more readable. So the idea here is to be able to access any database with a human readable collection name along with the operation that we want to perform. Before we get into how all this can be done, let's talk about what a standard app write query looks like. So there's multiple methods that we can use. We can create documents, we can get documents, update and delete, and then there's the list documents method. So every single method has a different set of requirements and parameters that it needs. Needs, but at a minimum, there is at least two parameters that every single one of these methods needs. And that's going to be the database ID and the collection ID. So these two are always required when we're calling one of these methods. And we also call this from the databases instance. Now the challenge I face is having to import the database ID and collection ID anywhere I want to use one of these methods. Now it's not that big of a deal, but it does require an extra step that I'd rather not have. So if I can abstract this away and not have to do this every single time, I would much prefer it. So there's that. And then there's also the fact that if we want to maybe just use an ID directly here, it's kind of hard to remember a particular database ID or collection ID with a 16 character string like this. It's a little bit challenging. So I'd rather not have this again. I'm trying to remove all of this. So what we're going to do here is create a wrapper for each one of the default methods that AppWrite already gives us and wrap them in a way where we can first assume the database ID when we're calling a particular collection. So we don't have to manually pass this in and to create a human readable way to call the collection instead of having to reference a name. So if a collection name is products or notes or messages, we can just go ahead and call the database with the specific collection name like db.products and then the operation we want to perform. Okay, so let's make all of this happen. So we're going to continue to work within this project here. We have this simple function right here inside of main.js where we simply make the request and we're going to change this to use that new format. So here we have an appwrite.js file. This is usually where I create all my configuration. So wherever you have this, make sure you have this set up. And with this new method here, what I like to do is go ahead and create a new file called databases or database.js. And this is where that core configuration is going to be. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and import databases from appwrite.js here and then we're going to import the database id and then the collection id right here for the products and with that i also want to import the id method which we're going to need later so this is going to be from appwrite where we use the id class to create a unique id when we're using the create method so we want to set up some basic imports and next, what I want to do is configure my collection information. So what I'm going to do is store all the information for a particular collection inside of an array because we may have more than one collection as a project scales. There's a good chance that you're going to have more than one. So this is where we're going to keep all that information. So inside of each object here, what I'm going to do is store some basic information like what database ID correlates with what collection, the collection ID, and then the actual name we want to reference that collection by. So let's go ahead and set the first key. This will be database ID. Here we can pass in this database ID and then the ID for the collection. This is gonna be collection ID right here. So we're bringing that in. And then the most important part here, this is gonna be the name of that collection. So whenever we call db dot whatever we wanna reference the collection by, so products, messages, notes, this is where we set that up. So that's gonna be the name. And then here we want to call this one products because it's the products collection. So that's the only collection we're going to set up. If you have more, go ahead and create another object and then just repeat this process with the information for that collection and then the name that you want to give each collection. So from this point, what we're going to do is go ahead and create an empty object called DB. And this is what we're going to reference inside of those other files. So I'm going to quickly export this and then I'll explain how this is going to work. So DB right here is an empty object. And we're eventually going to iterate through all of these collections right now. We're just going to manually access the first index and then start assigning these values. So DB is going to get its first assignment right now. So we're going to assign it a new key and the key is going to be collections right here. And then we're just going to grab the first index. So zero, this is the first index here, which is grabbing this object. And I did O instead of zero, and then we're grabbing the name. So the object gets a new key called products here. So that's the name of it. And we want to go ahead and assign this key a new object. And what this object is going to contain is going to be a list of methods. So we're going to assign another key called list. And this list right here is going to be a function and it's going to return the app write function that we have built in. So we're going to access databases 
dot list documents list documents we're going ahead and just setting that up here and we're going to pass in the collection information so we're going to access collection index zero and here we're going to pass in the database id and the collection id so that's just id like that and then we've already assigned the name now typically when you're calling list documents there's other parameters that you can throw in like queries if you're making some queries so we're just going to go ahead and pass those down so queries like that so anything that gets passed into the list method is going to get passed into this list documents method so really we're just creating that wrapper and then this is going to allow us to call something like this db dot products so our first key is products so we're accessing the products key and then when we call list here and if we pass in some queries that's going to get called into list so we're accessing the second key we're passing those in and then we're returning this function right here and then that's how the database id and collection id are already passed in so let's go ahead and test this so what i'm going to do is pass in the queries right here so inside of list documents queries are the third parameter so if we have any those get passed in and then everything works just fine so let's give this a test so inside of main.js what i'm going to do is actually just go ahead and remove that so our goal is to also clean up our code base a little bit make this look better so we're going to delete all of this and we're going to call db.products and then we're calling list so if I open up my console, I can just go ahead and refresh this. And just to make sure it's fresh, we're going to do control shift R and look at that. So I have the typical response that I would get for list documents, but now it's all wrapped up and I can see my items here or my documents from my collection. I see the total and everything's working the way that it should. So really we're still calling the standard methods. We're simply just wrapping that and making it a lot easier. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and just create the delete method, the get method, the create and update method. So we're just going to continue wrapping these. And uh, some of these methods do have more customization that we need to add to those. So we'll go ahead and fill those in. But before we do that, because we may have multiple collections and there's a good chance that you will, we want to do this automatically. So instead of adding all those methods and then having to reassign them every single time, what we're going to do is go ahead and create a for loop here. And we're going to loop over the collections and we're going to have this manual or automatically assigned. So let's do that. So we're just going to call collections dot for each and we're going to iterate through each collection, which we'll call call like that. And as we're iterating through this, let's go ahead and grab this right here where we're assigning that. And this way, every single time we add a collection, we go ahead and create that with the list method. So the update that we have to make here is setting the key right here. So we're going to change that to call dot key or call dot name and then we're going to update the collection id and then or the database id and then the actual collection id so now it makes that a little bit more automated so from here let's go ahead and just add in the rest of the methods so the next one i'm going to add is create so right now we're just going in and rinse and repeating the same process so it's not exactly anything new but you'll be able to see the other methods as they're being created so we'll call create here and same thing we're going to go ahead and create a function here we're going to call databases dot create create document and in here we're just going to pass in the same database id we'll pass in the collection id and then i'm also going to make sure that we have a comma there so we don't have any errors and with this one with the create method we typically want to create a new id so whether you generate it on your own or you're using the built-in app right way with create document we typically call id dot unique and this will generate a unique id for this method so we could just go ahead and do this so let's say we want to just automatically have that passed in but what if we want to create our own id before we actually create an item what we could do is just go ahead and set the id value to this method so if we have one it goes ahead and uses or if we don't have one it automatically generates one for us but if we want to manually pass our own in then this right here won't be assigned now with that we also have the payload so when we're creating an item we have a payload and that's going to be the first parameter so we're going to pass in the payload into the create method and then the id if we want to if we leave it empty it's fine that means this will just go ahead and be the default here so for create we have id payload database id and collection id then we have update so let's go ahead and just repeat this process a few more times 
and this is gonna this is just gonna start getting faster and faster as we continue so databases dot update document if I can type so update document and here we are typically gonna need the ID of the item we want to update and then the payload and we're just gonna go ahead and do this so we also need the database ID the collection ID ID of the document and the payload for update Okay, so from update, we're gonna to move to get and then delete. So we'll set the next key right here. And for get, we just need the ID and we're gonna call the get document method. So database or databases dot get document. And here we're rinse and repeating. We're just passing in these three and we're gonna call delete. And I feel like delete should probably be, be last here. So. Let's go ahead and do that delete and then we'll just continue this databases dot delete document I think by this point you kind of get the idea we're simply just wrapping each one and then for delete we want the ID okay so let's go ahead and save that it looks like oh I don't need that last one feels like I'm missing something oh we pass in the ID right there Okay, so that does it for all the methods. We have create, update, get, list, and delete. One thing to note is that some of these methods have extra parameters that we could pass in. For example, create document. You can also pass in permissions. If you wanna set document level permissions, you could just go ahead and set that up like this. So when we're calling create, we can pass in permissions and then make sure that that's thrown in. So check the documentation if there's ever an extra method that you might need. Go ahead and make sure that that's passed through. But this is the core idea of actually wrapping all of these methods. All right, so that does it for this video. If you found that helpful, make sure to follow the AppRite YouTube channel for more content like this. Make sure to leave me any feedback in the comment section and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.